Hoosier astronauts in space tonight. Welcome to New Center at 9.30. I'm Chad Wally. And I'm Casey Cavall. Crown Point native Jerry Ross has embarked on his seventh space mission, and that is tonight's top story. Ross is on board Space Shuttle Atlantis en route to the International Space Station. He happens to be NASA's most experienced spacewalker ever, having now performed seven trips in his career. The shuttle is carrying a crew of seven on a space station construction mission. The 54-year-old will venture outside the shuttle with 49-year-old Lee Morin this weekend to become the first pair of grandfathers to take a spacewalk together. Their nickname will be the Silver Team. Governor Frank O'Bannon transferred $430 million into the state's checking account today. The move is an effort to help mend Indiana's budget deficit. Board of Finance members say the transferred money should negate the need to raise taxes. But O'Bannon insists a tax increase is still needed to balance the budget. $430 million included cash from the Build Indiana Fund, money that had been allocated for state and local projects. It also involved tobacco settlement proceeds and money from the state highway fund. Meanwhile, Governor O'Bannon may call a special session to continue work on balancing the budget and tax restructuring. O'Bannon plans to meet with both parties tomorrow to discuss the idea. And we're now here with Ryan for a first look at the weather. It was a little rainy today. It was a little rainy today. In fact, we saw just a little bit over <clears throat> uh, a quarter of an inch of rain, so you definitely need that umbrella today. Taking a look ahead to Friday, though, it looks like, Casey, you're going to get to break out your shorts, maybe All go right. out and tan a little bit. <laughs> Look to have a high of 70 on Friday with lots and lots of sun. Looks like the rain's going to come back after that, though. What's it going to be like the rest of the week, though? Stick around. I'll let you know just a little bit later on. Okay, thanks, Thanks Ryan. a lot, Ryan. And investigators do not believe arson caused the DePaul University dormitory fire. About 80 DePaul students are living in churches and in the homes of faculty and local residents while the university finds them a permanent residence. Officials are estimating the damage at about a million dollars. The cause of the fire has yet to be determined. And today marks the first day to cast absentee ballots for next month's primary election. About 1 in 20 votes are expected to be cast by the absentee ballot. The Indiana General Assembly approved new voting rules allowing any voter to cast a ballot in this manner. However, the rule will take place after this primary. The current law requires that voters sign a statement certifying they meet a condition, such as being sick or out of town on election day. Today was the last day to register for the election. Indiana children are gaining weight, and the state schools could be partly to blame. That's because Indiana schools are devoting less time to physical education than they were two decades ago. And compared with students 20 years ago, twice as many Hoosier students, along with their peers, are now overweight. Student weight gains during the 20-year period were contributed to a de-emphasis on physical education and result of growing pressure on school officials to show progress in academics and test scores. Although the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends daily PE for all students through grade 12, Indiana requires only two semesters to graduate high school. Experts say the weight increase in children can be blamed on high fat fast food and too much time in front of TVs and computers, which they say makes it even more important for them to get exercise in school. About 30 parents are expected to protest outside of Northwest Indiana school tomorrow morning. Parents want state officials to close Lincoln Elementary because they believe their children's health is in danger. Drinking water at the school contains 10 times the federal recommended limit for gasoline additive MTBE. Some parents also say the building is contaminated with mold. North Newton School Superintendent Lewis Linninger says the contaminated levels in the water have declined and that the mold was cleaned last fall. The school is currently using bottled water for drinking, cleaning, and cooking. The Merchants National Bank in South Bend was held up on June 30, 1934. That may have been the last bank robbery for John Dillinger and his gang. Workers cleaning an Indiana courthouse discovered trial records from that particular robbery, but whether or not John Dillinger was even involved is still in dispute. Three weeks after the robbery in South Bend, Dillinger was shot to death by lawmen outside of a Chicago movie theater. The files found in the courthouse held newspaper photos and mug shots of Dillinger and his gang members, as well as pictures of a bullet-riddled automobile and bull prints of the bank building. From our partners at the Ball State Daily News, here are tomorrow's headlines tonight. Catch a story on a new parking program that Ball State's looking into. Also read up on Homeless Awareness Week and see how, how some local high schools will offer Ball State classes for credit. These stories and more in tomorrow's edition of the Daily News. And up next, Israel has started to back its troops while President Bush discusses the Middle East and Tennessee. And later on, Iraq has lashed out at the United States for their policy towards Israel. Stay tuned.
Israeli troops have started to pull out of Palestinian territories, leaving the West Bank city of Tokrum today. Meanwhile, President Bush stopped in Knoxville, Tennessee today to talk about domestic policy, but his focus remains on the Middle East. CNN's John King reports. Traveling in Tennessee, the president made clear his growing frustration. First of all, I meant what I said to the Prime Minister of Israel. I expect there to be withdrawal without delay. White House envoy Anthony Zinni demanded a Monday meeting with Prime Minister Sharon to personally deliver word of the president's disappointment. Mr. Bush bluntly told Mr. Sharon in this Saturday phone call that it was imperative that Israel end its military offensive in the Palestinian territories. But three days later, no Israeli pullback, complicating Secretary of State Colin Powell's efforts to broker an Israeli-Palestinian ceasefire. But the president's frustration hardly is limited to Prime Minister Sharon. For months, the administration has been asking Arab leaders like Saudi Crown Prince Abdullah to put more pressure on Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat and to publicly condemn attacks on Israeli civilians. But this Saudi Arabian internet posting talks of Saudi government aid to Palestinian martyrs. And this one highlights a recent Arab summit pledge of $150 million to support the Intifada and Al-Aqsa, a Palestinian group the State Department recently labeled a terrorist organization. The most important in this regard is that the Arab nations around Israel renounce terrorism, tell suicide bombers, you are not martyrs, you're just murdering people. This is not martyrdom. Top aides describe the president as increasingly angry and irritated. But Israel promised Monday night that a pullback is imminent. A little late in the White House view, but perhaps senior U.S. officials say still in time to keep alive Secretary Powell's hopes of brokering a ceasefire. John King, CNN, the White House. Secretary of State Colin Powell made his first stop on a peacekeeping mission. Mission. He met with King Mohammed in Morocco today and called for Israel to pull out of the West Bank. Powell will stop in Spain before arriving in Israel later this week. He's trying to get support from Arab leaders to pressure Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat to stop suicide bombings. Secretary Powell says he hopes to meet Arafat later in the week. Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein is sending a warning to the United States. Hussein will halt all oil exports immediately if an act of defiance for the United States' support of Israel. Jane Arafat has more. Well, the Iraqi president is making good on his threat. He's been calling for an oil boycott to affect the United States to pressure Israel to withdraw from the Palestinian territories. Not much response to that one, but today the president made a surprise and dramatic announcement. He said starting immediately there would be no oil exports from the Turkish pipeline and from the maritime ports in the south of Iraq. Now that affects primarily the United States. The U.S. is the biggest customer of Iraqi crude oil, and that's exactly what this move is aimed at. The Iraqi president said that this should not be mistaken. It should be taken as a warning bell, a warning to the United States and a warning to Israel. It's not, though, without its own repercussions here in Iraq. And the Iraqi government organized demonstrations throughout Baghdad in support of this move. Iraqis, though, weren't asked about the move beforehand, and in fact, this is the money that comes out of the UN-supervised Oil for Food program, the program under which Iraq sells oil to buy food, medicine, and other humanitarian supplies. UN officials say there won't be any immediate impact since Iraq has quite a big stockpile of food and medicine, but if it does go longer than a month, there could be worries. That program, supervised by the UN, that Iraq has always opposed, is right now running short of money. And there are fears that over the long term, that could have a great humanitarian impact here in this country. Jane Araf, CNN, Baghdad. Cincinnati's police union says it has approved a settlement in a racial profiling case. A year ago, a white Cincinnati police officer shot and killed an unarmed black man, which caused riots. A black motorist filed the lawsuit accusing the city of racial profiling. Despite the settlement, the city has not admitted to wrongdoing and the police union has denied charges of racial profiling. It is our membership's belief, again, that we do not racially profile and that was one of our, our big uh, sticking points in, during the vote, is that if we sign this agreement or if we agree to this agreement, that we agree that we racially profile. The settlement will set up a citizen complaint authority to investigate investigate complaints against police, but Cincinnati residents are also encouraged to report positive interactions with police.
A Boston attorney is speaking out about a case which claims his client was molested by a Catholic priest. Attorney Eric McLeish and his clients say the Boston Archdiocese knew for decades about complaints against priest Paul Shanley. McLeish also says he has documents from church's personnel files to prove it. All of the suffering that has taken place at the hands of Paul Shanley, a serial child molester for four decades, three of them in Boston, none of it had to happen. Shanley is accused of molesting a young boy for over five years in the 1980s. Hundreds of doctors rallied today to prote protest the cost of malpractice insurance. Offices closed to allow the medical workers to join in a day of awareness. Doctors say the spiraling costs are making it harder for them to do their jobs. The insurance industry says expenses are going through the roof all over, paying out more in claims than it's taking in with premiums. Well, heavy drinking can be dangerous to a woman's health, but for reasons you might not have guessed. And what qualifies as heavy drinking? That might surprise you too. Christy Fegg has more. Most women know men can handle more alcohol than they can. A guy can have like three shots and a girl can have three shots and it affects the girl so much more. That's because a woman's body is made of less water, so the alcohol is less diluted. And those drinks do more than make a woman tipsy. Researchers now know alcohol starts to damage a woman's organs at a much lower level than a man's. It differs from woman to woman, but research very strongly suggests that as low a level as two drinks a day, you can start seeing liver damage. And the liver isn't all. Researchers have found a woman's brain and heart are also more vulnerable. I suspect when we look at other organs, we're going to find the same thing. So what is considered one drink? Either 12 ounces of beer, or five ounces of wine, or one and a half ounces of hard liquor, either in a shot or mixed drink. And according to the dietary guidelines, anything more than one drink a day for a woman is considered heavy drinking. But what about the heart protection alcohol offers? Experts say it's only postmenopausal women who get the benefit. And it's found at three drinks a week. For those who are predisposed, that benefit is wiped out by the risk of breast cancer. In Washington, I'm Christy Feig. President Bush is urging more Americans to donate their time and service to the community. Bush talked to local officials in Knoxville, Tennessee today to promote the Citizen Corps. For active and retired doctors and nurses to lend a hand in preparing the, any community for an emergency. Bush urges Americans to commit two years or 4,000 hours of service to volunteer work over the course of a lifetime. Well, Ryan, it was so nice out today, except for the rain. It, it, the All I wanted was sunshine. Yeah, the temperatures were great today. We actually made it up to 63 today. What are we going to make it down to tonight and into your weekend? Stick around. I'll let you know right after the break. Well, good evening and welcome back to News Center 43. Let's go ahead and start you off with a look at the weather almanac for today. Really just a great day out there. Normally we see 58, however, we topped in at 5 degrees above that at 63. Normally we see 38, but we came in well above that, 12 degrees in fact, at 50 degrees. If you'd like, you can get up to see the sunrise tomorrow morning, but good luck because you're going to see some clouds that will be covering that up. But you should be able to see the sun go down at about 714. Here's some of the highs around the state today. 63 in Indianapolis and right here in Muncie. 59 up there in South Bend. They also saw a 0.7 hundredths of an inch of rain. So lots of rain up there, but nothing compared to Lafayette, or actually to Fort Wayne. Sorry about that. They saw almost just a tenth of an inch shy. Right here in Muncie, like I said a little bit earlier, we saw just over a quarter of an inch. Currently here in Muncie, just a couple of sprinkles right now. Those are going to stop a little bit later on though, and more rain is going to come into the area. Right now we are seeing a temperature of 59 degrees with wind out of the southwest at about 15 miles an hour. Here's a look at what's going on around the nation satellite-wise. You can see a couple different uh, things going on here. There's one little pressure system down here around Louisiana. Another one kind of sitting up here uh, around uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota. Those are both kind of working together to bring us all that rain that we're going to see tonight and really probably into the next, into tomorrow morning. And in fact, right there is that rain. 
some real heavy rain down there around Louisiana. Nothing that we're going to be concerned about, though. Just some very light stuff up here uh, that's actually going to be moving into our area over the next couple of hours. And in fact, we'll go ahead and zoom in right there. You can see Muncie is just right there on the tip of that rain. And like I said, it's kind of going up to the northeast. So it's going to stop for just a little while, but then it's going to pick up again a little bit later on, probably around the midnight hour. So really nothing to be too concerned about. So tonight, you've got this cold front right there. That's going to move down across us and going to bring some rain. Could see a possible thunderstorm, although I don't think that's very likely. Going to go ahead and throw in the chance for it, though, just in case. Should see a low of about 49 degrees with winds out of the south at 20 miles an hour. For tomorrow, this cold front, that's moved on by us. This dome of high pressure right behind it, that's going to take over. Going to get rid of all the precipitation that we're seeing. Just going to keep our... Uh, sky is relatively cloudy for the next couple of days and then it's going to get rid of that after that. So in fact it's for tomorrow morning look for that rain to wrap up and get on out of here. A temperature of 55 degrees with wind out of the north at about 15 miles an hour. For tomorrow the rain's going to end but the clouds are going to stick around. Look for a high of 58 tomorrow with winds out of the north at 10 miles an hour. And for that three-day forecast guys take a look at that. Looks like it's going to get really nice over the next couple of days. On Wednesday look for a, a high of 65 uh, partly cloudy. Then on Friday like I said earlier we're going to top out at 70 degrees. Okay well it's pretty nice considering last year we saw about 83 degrees degrees at this time of year. It's not bad. Yeah, pretty good. All right. I like it warm. Let's keep it there. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Ryan. Jason Matthews joins us for a look at sports. And Jason, I'm sure there's a lot of news going around the IU campus tonight. Uh, that's right. Jared Jeffries made his big decision on today on what he wants to do. A lot of experts wanted him to stay around for another year or so, and I'll have that and a whole lot more right after this break. This afternoon, Indiana's chances for a return to the national title game were reduced drastically. Jared Jeffries, the Big Ten Player of the Year, made it official for going his final two years at Indiana to head to the NBA. The Indiana star led an overlooked Hoosier team to the Big Ten co-championship and the NCAA title game where the Maryland Terrapins beat out the Hoosiers. Jeffries can still return to Indiana for his junior year as long as he does not sign with an agent. This weekend, Ball State came home to Ball Diamond for a four-game set against Toledo. And as the warm weather broke out, so did the Cardinals' offense, outscoring the Rockets 36-13 en route to a four-game sweep to remain undefeated on home turf this year. The, the sweep also gives the Cards their longest winning streak of the year and pushes them two games above the 500 mark. They'll go for win number five in a row Tuesday afternoon when they travel to Xavier. The consensus was that Cleveland Indians had slipped. With all the offseason changes, they wouldn't be nearly as good this year. But they set out today to prove to the Minnesota Twins that they were still the AL Central powerhouses. In the bottom of the first, Ellis Burks wants to make a point and sends this shot seatward to give the Indians an early 3-2 lead. Then in the bottom of the third, Travis Fryman doesn't want to be outdone and decides to go yard with this grand slam home run to put the Indians up 7-4. And then in the bottom of the fourth, Matt Lawton jacks this two-run homer to make it 9-4 and keep distance from the Twins. Minnesota gave up three home runs and actually out-hit the Indians, but couldn't come up with enough firepower in the end. Cleveland wins it 9-5. The Pittsburgh Pirates don't resemble a team that lost 100 games last season. One thing that hasn't changed is that's what they were hoping for. The first-place Pirates were at home today taking on the Cincinnati Reds. Early on, the early on with runners on first and second, Elmer Descends gets this ground ball to end the Pittsburgh threat. Then in the bottom of the sixth, Aaron Ramirez takes this Descends pitch deep enough to left to score Brian Giles, who got to third on a balk, making the score one to nothing. Then in the eighth, Mike Fetters gets Brady Clark to ground into this 5-4-3 double play and keep the Reds from putting together any sort of rally to tie the game. Ron Vallone had an excellent day on the mound for the Pirates, pitching seven and one-thirds innings and giving up four hits to keep the Reds at bay. But there is more news for the Reds and Ken Griffey Jr. today besides the loss as Griffey partially dislocated his right kneecap in the seventh inning Sunday during the Reds game against the Expos. 
Griffey has been injury ridden since he arrived at Cincinnati two years ago. He's expected to miss at least three to six weeks. Oh, that's too bad for him. Yeah, it really, really hurts the Reds. You know, they were hoping to have everybody healthy house. and get things back going this year, but, you know, just another bump in the road. Wow. Thanks, Thanks Jason. When we return, we'll have another look at weather with Ryan Miller. Stay tuned. Well, for that final look at weather tonight, looks like we're going to see some rain. Probably won't see a thunderstorm, but I'm going to go ahead and throw in the chance for it. Just, hey, you never know. We do have some severe weather. Nothing to get concerned about, though. Low tonight of 49. Wind should be a warm one out of the south at about 20 miles an hour. For your morning commute or walk to school tomorrow, look for that rain to be ending, although you probably will be getting wet if you're headed out at about 8 o'clock. Temperature of 55 degrees with wind out of the north at 15. And then for tomorrow, look to have clouds all day long, high of 58 degrees, almost to 60, not quite though. Wind out of the north at 10 miles an hour. And for that three-day forecast on Wednesday, look to have a high of 62. Here I am. <laughs> and then on 70, it looks like we're going to be partly cloudy with a high of 70. Okay, right. so we're slowly progressing to the sunshine. Yes. Well, it's pretty nice. What was it, yesterday with the sun and everything? Unfortunately, I want though, that again. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, looks like we're going to throw in some chance for thunderstorms. No. Temperatures are going to stay 70, though. Okay, we'll All like right. you for now, but next week we're not going <laughs> to like you anymore. That's right, right. Thanks, Thanks for joining us for News Center at 930. I'm Casey Cavall. And I'm Chad Walling. News Center 43 is an official CNN Student Bureau. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for News Center at 530. Good, Good night.